All right, we are back with another daily reflection on the daily Vedantic. And today's reflection, like so many within the series, is on, well, really generically, getting what you want, what you ultimately want. Vedanta is a manual for getting what you want. It is the manual. It is so effective at outlining just how the universe works, how you work, how other people work, and how to get what you want. It even outlines, for many of us, it is so helpful to even outline what you want. Because we carry around these symbols of symbols of symbols of the things that we think we want. Deep down, what you want is peace and prosperity. Both of those things. Because beneath that, what you want is limitless freedom. What you are seeking is to unshackle yourself from whatever you think is keeping you unstable, unsteady, locked down, uncomfortable. You're seeking freedom from that discomfort. We, I know I shouldn't say you, we are all seeking limitless freedom. And laddering up to that, we're seeking peace and prosperity. And laddering up to that, choose any symbol you think is going to give you those things. A promotion, a spouse, a family, a big house. They're all just shades. They're carbon copies of carbon copies of carbon copies of what we really want, which is to be free of whatever trapping you might be in or you might be fearful of. I mean, it's hip right now in Silicon Valley for a lot of my friends to invest behind longevity companies to live forever. And that's simple. They are trying to be free of how the world works. Instead of just having a thermostat to keep the weather from bothering you, keeping it at 72 degrees, people want to be 32 years for forever. But Vedanta will say that all of these are misguided mumukshatwa, misguided pursuits of that freedom, of that liberation. It might be a psychedelic, it might be reaching for that third cup of coffee, it might be in the massive scale, getting that that bank account number that you really want to achieve. But all of these are misguided pursuits of what we really want. Vedanta is so helpful because it just outlines, well, this is what you're really going after. And it says, this is the goal. And to work backwards from that goal, start from success and work backwards. Not only is Vedanta work that way, Jeff Bezos also famously manages that way where you start from success and you work backwards. Then you know what to do today for that goal you have for tomorrow. And within Vedanta, that misguided mamukshatwa, that misguided approach, not only is it reoriented to the right thing that you're seeking, peace, prosperity, and an education of what peace and prosperity are, an education of what we're actually seeking, freedom, limitless freedom, but it also tells us how we get there, and that is through the development of the intellect, the cultivation of the intellect, what we want and how to get there, articulated explicitly. So you might be asking, especially if this is your first episode, what the hell is the intellect? Well, we have three equipments to navigate the world. Repetition is power, if you've heard this before. It took me a hundred times before the penny dropped that you have a body, a mind, and an intellect to navigate the world around us. A body, a mind, both of those things are not going to be groundbreaking. We all know those, those things are, are common knowledge, or at least colloquially, we will all nod our heads and say, yeah, I've heard that before. Body, mind, we all say that pretty much every corner of the earth. But Vedanta is explicit that you have another internal equipment beyond just the mind to navigate the world, and that is the intellect. Definition of the intellect, not only is it uh, that which discerns, decides, that can reason versus the mind, which is feelings, emotions, 
likes, dislikes, preferences. The intellect can discern, well, what is the right path here? What should I do right now? Um, Vedanta has no shoulds and shouldn'ts, has no thou shalts. It doesn't even tell you what are the right actions versus the wrong actions. It is very subjective to you, your context, and what you're doing it for. Therefore, you need that intellect to decide what to do when. And that intellect, one of my favorite definitions for the intellect is the capacity to see the end in the beginning. So what is going to give you that freedom that you're pursuing and which misguided pursuits are actually going to give you more constraint, restraint, which are going to be actually illiberating rather than liberating. That is the development of the intellect. So what you want and how to get it. Liberation from all constraints and all forms. And maybe even in a mundane sense, liberation from financial stress, liberation from feelings of isolation, loneliness, freedom from this insecurity that you might have of not belonging. We're seeking that freedom. And even in that mundane sense, the development of the intellect gets us those things. Gets us all of those things. It is as practical for the mundane as it is profound for the spiritual. That is Vedanta, the manual for living. In a nutshell, the perennial philosophy as Aldous Huxley called it. So, what you want and how to get it. In a nutshell, what you want is that limitless freedom, that peace, prosperity, that give you that freedom from suffering, permanent freedom from suffering, that limitless freedom. And how do you get it? The cultivation, development of your intellect. As Aristotle put it, the most important thing we do is the cultivation of our character. So the natural question is, how much time do you spend cultivating your character? 10 minutes a week? 10 minutes a month? Never? Well, if it's the most important thing we do according to Aristotle or according to Vedanta, maybe it's something you should at least put in 10 minutes a day. Over time, maybe 15 and 30, my favorite way to cultivate my character, cultivate my and develop my intellect is watching one of Swamiji's lectures, which we'll put the link to the show notes each morning before the sun comes up, before the world just pulls you out of that introspective, quiet stillness in the morning before the sun comes up. That is the best time to invest the cultivation of your intellect, of your character, and develop that capacity to get what you want. Two hours later, in that work meeting, what you want and feel like you need then, all the way to what you want in the grand scheme, that limitless freedom. This has been today's daily reflection on the daily Vedantic, on what you want and how to get it. See you next time.